Hey everyone, welcome to another DIY painting tips video. In this video, I'm gonna be painting this living room here. It's kind of an old, I don't know what to call it, darkish green. <laughs> and they wanted to go to a more bright, limey green, I guess. Anyway, that's what they wanted to do, and I'm here to give them what they want. Right off the bat, the first thing I do on a project like this is start with all the wall repairs. I use five minute mud. It just sets in five minutes so that you can layer it up all in the same day without waiting a day in between every coat. This wall was actually behind a big bookshelf that she has and there was some cracking going on in it. So I just wanted to tape these major cracks just to make sure that my mud lasted a little bit longer and did well. She actually didn't even want me to repair this wall. She wanted me to just paint over it. And I said, oh, don't worry. I got a little tape and mud in my car. I'll go get it, see what I can do and do just kind of a quick job, nothing too fancy. I'm sure there's some drywall guys who would be like, oh, I can't believe you just whipped that out like that, but it gets covered again. This wall will never be seen and that's fine. This is a pretty good job. Other than that, this is an old 1950s, 1960s home, somewhere in there. And I believe there's a lot of old plaster walls under here. And there's a lot of cracking, maybe 20 old paint jobs, runs, stuff like that going on. She just wanted major holes and stuff filled up and a few dips and dents here and there. So I just did a basic cleanup. I didn't skim coat the whole wall, which, you know, if you looked at some of it, you probably could have justified but this was just find the holes, find the dings, find the dents, patch everything up. You can see I used the butt end, the hammer end of the knife there on some holes in the wall. And that's just to kind of push the wall back in where the nail came out. It leaves like a little ridge around where the nail was and that dents it in so that when I sand it, the wall can sand perfectly smooth. And you can see because I used five minute mud, it's not dry, but it has set. So same day, I can already go ahead and start putting the second coat of mud on. And because these are small little areas, you know, basic repair, I'm just doing two coats of mud here. So I will finish mudding them, get that second coat of mud on so that they blend in really nice. And then uh, I'll sand them and get it all painted up. Here I'm going around with just a dust brush and cleaning off the trim so that my tape bonds to that trim really well. And I don't get any bleed through on my tape. Yeah, I'd get the tops there. Just get that little layer of dust off. She had a pretty clean home, so it was really just get a little bit of that off. Here's a little trick I like to do. When I do a whole house, this is especially important, but I run my fingers along the tape to push that inside edge down. So I like to tape my fingers up so that I don't wear off my fingernails when I sit and grind them along the wall. When you do a whole house, it's so important. I've had my fingers on fire. I've been missing fingernails when I'm done. It can get really bad. So I wrap them with a little bit of tape. I went around the outside all this trim with frog tape. I really like frog tape for these sorts of things. The edge is treated with their sharp edge technology. They put a treatment on the edge of their tape that when the paint hits it and it starts absorbing some moisture, it expands so that no paint can get under that tape and you get these really sharp, clean lines. On the mantle, I used the frog tape delicate surface just to make sure that it didn't pull up any of the old paint, which it It'd been on there so long, I can't imagine it would have, but I just wanted to be careful and make sure. And then back to their regular all around frog tape right here. And I go around, I run it over with my fingers to kind of set it in place. Then I go back over with a five in one tool to push that inside edge down. And that just helps ensure that no paint gets on that trim when I'm done. I have the cleanest, sharpest lines. You'll see guys all over on the internet saying, I'm a professional painter, I don't use tape. Nonsense. Tape serves multiple purposes. One, you get a razor sharp line, and two, it acts as a mini drop cloth over the trim. So when you're rolling, little tiny speckles will happen, and a lot of people don't pay attention to them, painters included, but when you get down on your hands and knees, a lot of times you can see there's speckles all over that trim because someone painted without tape. Fill up my little cut-in tray. Here I've got a two and a half inch angled sash brush here. I like them stiff for cutting in ceilings. So I use a two and a half inch stiff brush. This is just a polyester blend. First thing I do is I go in and cut a really sharp line and then I go back and brush it down about six inches or so. That gives me just enough room to roll up near the ceiling without ever hitting the ceiling when I'm using my roller and rolling out the rest of the walls. Cutting in around little things like the hooks for the curtains. A high quality brush is essential. You can really get a lot more control out of your bristles 
and stuff like that. I don't tape off the edges of windows and doors because I don't need that extra little drop cloth there. So I cut that in with a brush. Same with the tops of windows. For one, the only person who's ever gonna put their head up there is me and look down at the top of that window. But two, it's very easy to cut that in and I don't need to waste any more tape than necessary. But I do fully believe in taping all trim on the floors. And I think anyone professional or a DIYer can benefit from taping off the trim. Probably takes a good hour to cut in a room like this. I like to cut in all the ceilings and then I go back and I cut in around the things like the fireplace and I go down to the floor trim and I'll cut in about six inches up from where I taped. And I like to just brush in that trim right there. When I'm cutting in base trim like that, I like to brush just above the trim and start to kind of spread the paint out. And then I'll go down. I don't want to just gob in the trim with paint. So I kind of brush it up then go in and cut a little bit closer. You kind of see me doing that. In little areas like this, I like to just brush it all in with my brush. May or may not go in with the roller depending on if I can fit a roller in there. During this part, I also go in and with a brush cut in around all of the outlets. There's an old uh, phone line there. I don't even run into those very often anymore. I took them all out of my house. The homeowner here said she thought she was really smart when they did some updating on their house. They added in all these phone jacks all over their house. And she said within a couple of years, they had Wi-Fi. And the main reason for these phone jacks was so they could have a modem in any room they wanted it in. She said it was within about two years, they had zero use for all these phone jacks that they had just put into their home. And I stress again the importance of a high quality brush here. If you've ever bought those two, three, four, five, six dollar brushes and try to cut in a straight line, any kind of line on a home like this, you're just fighting an uphill battle and it is no fun. The bristles don't bounce back. They tend to bend over and stay bent over. They'll start flaring out in every direction. Also going to say Bluey Rocks, one of the cartoons that I absolutely love watching with the kids. I probably love it as much as they do. So yeah, I'm rocking Bluey today. I mean, my goodness, the dad in Bluey is about as good as a dad can be, right? He's like, who's my role model for a dad? Uh, Bluey's dad. I don't know Bluey's dad's name, but he's awesome. A good paint job is, do you have good patience? Are you good with taking your time on things, just going slow and not getting too antsy and trying to go fast? As soon as you try to go too fast, that's when paint jobs get sloppy. I tell people all the time, anyone can paint, anyone can paint cabinets, anyone can paint their house. Do you have the patience for it? That's all you need. A little bit of patience, maybe, you know, a couple of DIY painting videos and you're good to go. When we ran a larger painting company and we were doing a lot of work, whenever we'd hire somebody new, we'd always give them a brush and a roller. And if we we're doing a whole house, we would have them paint all the closets. That's where we'd have them practice and learn how to cut in and roll. So if you haven't cut in before and you wanna practice and get better at it, start with your closets. It's a great place. Nobody ever looks up at the ceiling in a closet Unless you got one of the big walk-in closets, you know, I guess. By the way, my tattoo on my right forearm, my 16-year-old niece designed that. She is incredible and wants to be a tattoo artist someday. So shout out to her. She's awesome. She drew it, designed it, did everything, and uh, it was super cool, so I had to go with it. These wall sconces right above the fireplace were very tricky to cut in around. The homeowner came and told me she's so glad that she didn't have to cut in around them. She was very worried about them. You could take them off the wall, but like I said, this nice brush, I got around them perfect. You do see a little paint on them, but that is the old paint. That is definitely not my paint. I got around them perfect and just kind of manipulating those bristles and you can get just a couple bristles to move where you want them to and really get in and cut in stuff like that perfect. But Definitely not something you can do with a cheap paintbrush. Again, another kind of tricky thing to cut around are these handrails. It can be quite tedious. And the top there was so narrow in between the ceiling and the rail, I had to put a little bit of tape on the handrail so that I could cut in the ceiling. Everything else worked out just fine. Maybe worth mentioning that come March, we are launching our own brand of paintbrushes. They're amazing. 
We're testing them out right now. I've got a whole load of paintbrushes in my shop and they're wonderful. I cannot wait to share them with you all. So little secret for everyone. We will have brushes by March. But in the meantime, I'm gonna start rolling the first layer of the top coat. I like to use these extension poles. I, I used a Wooster two to four foot pole. The reason I do that is it saves your back. If you do any amount of painting at all and you don't use an extension pole, it takes about one wall before you start feeling it in your back. And with an extension pole like this, you can extend it out and it's very little back movement, just a little arm workout and you can go and go and go. Without the extension pole, you're going to get exhausted and you're going to run out of steam in your back before you know it. Also, I use a 3 8 inch woven nap roller. I like 3 8 inch for most interior painting. A lot of professional painters, they might go with the 3 quarter inch. It's because the 3 quarter inch holds more paint and you can go faster. And if you know what you're doing, you can still get a great finish with the 3 quarter inch. I like them, like them for a lot of things. But for most interior residential work, a 3 8 inch is great. I use it because that's what I recommend you use. I would not recommend a DIYer using a three quarter inch nap roller. You're gonna make a hot mess of your wall. You're gonna have paint everywhere. The texture is gonna be way too thick. You're gonna have crazy stipple. It's just gonna get really ugly really quick. So go with that three eighths inch woven nap roller and you will be happy. They're very easy to work with and leave a nice finish on the wall. When you're sanding, here's a little tip for you. You want to blend the outside edges. So you go around that outside edge and make sure to blend all the outside edges. And then the middle of your sanding pad, of your drywall patch, excuse me, it really only needs a little bit of sanding if you skimmed it really nice and smooth to begin with. So here you can see I'm just working those outside edges. I had a couple of bad edges that really needed to be smoothed out. But then the inside just needs a light sand to knock off any marks, smooth it out. So blend it in the wall and don't over sand the middle. When you over sand the middle, that's when you create a problem. If you taped it and you over sand the middle and you start to see little bumps of the tape come out, that looks bad. You see it in your finish. I go into homes all the time where I can see where kind of a homeowner did a tape job and over sanded. So just remember that, sand the outside edges and lightly sand the middle. Also, if you're doing a lot of sanding, you should be wearing a mask. I should be wearing a mask. I regretted it. I had a lot of dust in my nose, on my hair, everywhere. I didn't like it at all. And also, I didn't show this in the video, but I vacuumed and wiped up all the sanding dust before I started rolling, which you should do too. Back to rolling. Roll, roll, roll. Here's a tip about rolling. If you watch any DIY shows, I've seen it, you know, where the people on TV and stuff, and they they say, just randomly roll in every direction. Do not do that. If you see the wall when they're done, you have stipple going in every direction. It's a hot mess and the walls look terrible and the sheen doesn't blend evenly. Up and down, nice even strokes and work your way, you know, left to right. Right to left, I suppose, if you're left-handed, it probably feels more comfortable. Top to bottom, not random in every direction. I have literally seen people online and in shows say, just start painting in every direction. No, no, the wall looks ridiculous when you're done doing that. You want a nice, even top to bottom. And as soon as I say that, I rolled in every direction here, but I am under the stairs. So, you know, I went back and did up and down. Certain areas call for a little bit of an adjustment. Oh, you can see the dresser that goes in front of that wall. Dresser, I don't know, hutch, piece of furniture. You can see here, I couldn't quite extend out the pole as much until I got past that piece of furniture and I have less movement in my back as soon as I extended it out. And these quick extension poles, the kind that's just snap short and then little button and they slide and go long are really nice because then when you dip your paint, you don't have to use a really long extended pole when you're dipping. And then you can just make it long again when you're rolling the wall, make it short, dip, get your paint. I like to roll right up next to those corners as close as possible, just kind of cover as much of the brush strokes as possible. So when I'm done, you really just have a thin quarter inch, half inch line of maybe some brush strokes around a outlet and along the ceiling, you're never gonna really see them. But if you do, brush strokes are a part of life. You can't paint without a brush. And we're on to the second coat. And when you cut in your second coat, to go nice and quick, you actually don't need to go right next to the ceiling again. 
I stay about an eighth of an inch away on all of my second coat cutting. I get really close and you can just see it there in the video. But I stay about an eighth of an inch back from the fireplace and an eighth of an inch back from the ceiling. So when you're cutting the second coat, you go probably about twice as fast. So I'm just about done with cutting in the second coat. The other tool you see there is a little handy paint pail. Another really handy thing when you're cutting in ceilings and cutting in trim and all that. Just it's shaped nice, little handle for your hand. One of those nice little tools. It's only a couple bucks, but once you've used them, they're wonderful. All right. Now that we're done cutting in the second coat, now it's time to roll it out. And this is typically a very quick part of the paint job. You already cut in everything twice. You've got to roll on once. So it's just roll out that color one more time to just give it that nice, solid, good look. A lot of paints these days like to say one coat coverage, stuff like that. But in my experience, almost no paints cover well in one coat. Even when they say they do, it just looks better after two. So you gotta roll out that second coat. And there you have it. The paint job is complete and we are on to clean up. Look at this. The frog tape delicate surface and frog tape paint is coming off beautifully. It's not pulling the paint off the wall, which I love, and it's not pulling the paint off the trim, and it's leaving a nice, sharp, clean line. And there you have it. There's our completed project. The room feels very bright now, and the white really pops next to the updated green. I think it looks great, and so did the homeowner. But now I want to hear what you think. Do you like the new color or did you like the old color better? What was your favorite tip from today's video? Do you have any painting tips or tricks of your own to share? Leave a comment below with your thoughts or if you just wanna let me know you made it to the end of the video, that's awesome too. Thanks so much for watching and good luck on your DIY painting projects.